This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. A few of my favorite things? I don't think so. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. I'm Mark. You can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics, on iTunes or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. So The Sound of Music, which is really a holiday tradition, was recently reprised by NBC as a live production. Well, the movie is a holiday tradition. Yes, yeah, exactly. Uh, I do prefer the movie. I don't think this will be uh, taking over for it, in spite of the fact that it's being rerun. Yes. Uh, Carrie Underwood has never acted before, and she barely did here. You know, you've got to give her cred for trying. Right. Uh, but, but I think her voice doesn't even have the range for the part. You couldn't hear her, especially in the low notes. And and, and it seemed like she was a little winded at times. Yes. <laughs> um, the orchestra, which I assume was taped, was too loud throughout it, the whole thing. Um, the only really decent performance you got was from the Broadway veterans. Who are used to doing something like that. So. Right, right. But it was this huge rating hit, and NBC's going to do more live musicals. They've already said they're going to do one for the next holiday season, but they don't know what it is yet. Right. Of course, this is hardly the first time this has ever been done. Uh, I do want to thank uh, musicals101.com for some of this information. Early TV had a lot of time to fill, (laughs) and the industry was mostly in New York City, and so it was logical they would bring in some Broadway shows to do numbers here and there. Well, if you think about it, they still do this today with fillers on the parades, on the um, right. Macy's Parade. Right. You know, they have uh, the Broadway acts come out and do their little bits in between showing things in the parade. To so. the point, in some cases, you don't actually get to see the parade. Yes. Uh, they even did operas in the early years. There was a mall and the Night Visitors in 1951 and The Marriage in 1953. And there were multiple tributes to Rodgers and Hammerstein and Irving Berlin. One of the first big events, though, was that Ford Motors had a 50th anniversary spectacular, which is what they called these things. This was on two networks simultaneously, CBS and NBC. That's almost unheard of. And if Ford was willing to pay for it, then... That's the kind of money they had. Yeah. And it included this duet of Ethel Merman and Mary Martin doing Broadway numbers. And it was this huge hit, and they sold all these soundtracks and all this. So, the next big event was Mary Martin, again, in Peter Pan, 1955. Live from Broadway. Now keep in mind, this is all live because there was no other real way to record it other, right. than, other than kinescopes, which was the, this is the precursor to videotape. They would take a film camera, and they would point it at a TV screen. <laughs> and so it was really lousy quality. Um, in this case, they actually cut the Broadway run short just to get this broadcast. They actually ended the Broadway show early, earlier than they had planned, hmm. so they could set up to do this live broadcast. Because they had to get rid of the audience? or Yeah, they had to set up for TV. Uh, they reunited the cast a year later to do it again, and then they produced it again in 1960 in living color. Right. <laughs> uh, Kathy Rigby did a remake of it in 2000. I vaguely remember yeah. that, mm-hmm. but just vaguely. Right. Then there was Our Town, also 1955. Sinatra, Paul Newman, and Eva Marie Saint. Hmm. So, uh, did Our Town. Now, do you know if any of these are available to watch again? Or some, is, were they some taped? Or? Well, some are. The 50s stuff, you can find kinescopes that they've transferred to DVDs. Mm-hmm. Some of these are available. The next one I actually would like to see, I've never heard of before. 1956 High Tour... I have heard of it. Okay. Bing Crosby and Julie Andrews. It's a man at this upstate New York mountain runs into a ghost. <laughs> it aired five days before Julie Andrews began her My Fair Lady run. Mm-hmm. 1957, again, Julie Andrews, Cinderella, Roger and Hammerstein's version. It only aired once because the kinescope was incomplete because the... Apparently, Richard Rogers was making changes at the last minute, and so the version that went out live was different than a technical rehearsal that they taped huh. or, or they they did the kinescope for. There, what it was but, also, but it was filmed. Oh, okay. Because I was going to say, I have a DVD of that one. Uh, this is my absolute favorite yes. musical, right? Um, Rogers and Hammerstein, Cinderella. Right. One hundred and seven million viewers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> now, I didn't watch it when it was originally no, on, because no. I was not born then. Right, 1957. Yeah. Uh, there were remakes in 1964 with Leslie Ann Warren. And with um, the guy who played um, on, on General Hospital, which is why I always watch that one, because okay. uh, Alan Quartermain okay. was, was on it. <laughs> uh, and then there was another remake in 1988 with Brandy. 1998. 1998. That, yes. That... Um, that Disney did. Yes, basically. and that was pretty good, but it really wasn't as good as the earlier ones. No. 1962, Mr. Magoo's Christmas Carol. This was an animated thing, but it was the first time they did this animated musical for television the, the, and with all original songs. Uh, it was a show within a show concept. But it was obviously not live. No. If it was animated. No, it was animated. And then, of course, the other Christmas musicals that we've always seen, Rudolph in 64. Rudolph is considered a musical? Well, there's a lot of songs in it. There's I several suppose. songs in it. I guess I just really don't consider anything animated a musical. Well, Sorry. Grinch in 1966, Little Drummer Boy in 1969, Santa Claus Coming to Town in 1970. And past 1970, it's mostly specials on PBS. The network's really walked away from that after that. Until 1993, Gypsy with Bette Midler as Rose. I didn't see that. I would love I to see I that. I remember seeing it. That was the year we got married. How did you see that in me? Not I have no that? idea, but I remember seeing it. Huh. Uh, Bye Bye Birdie, 1996, with Jason Alexander and Vanessa Williams. And that was very good. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed that one mm -hmm. a lot. South Pacific, 2001, with Glenn Close, which apparently wasn't very good. I <laughs> vaguely remember it. I uh, Music Man in 2003 with Matthew Broderick and Kristen Chenoweth. And that Chenoweth. was good. I liked that yes, one. Yes, that was very good. Once Upon a Mattress, 2005 with Tracy Ullman and Carol Burnett. Now, I think I saw her do an earlier version well, of that. Well, because Carol Burnett had originated the main role in, in the musical, she had mm -hmm. actually done it for television in 1964 and 1972. Mm-hmm. And then there's the high school musicals from Disney. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. type of thing. I did see High School Musical, the first yeah. one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was, you know, not bad for yeah. a musical, I guess. Right. And then you can't forget Cop Rock, 1990. Stephen Bochco did this drama slash musical series, Think Hill Street Blues with Music. It was an enormous failure. <laughs> yes, but, but you know what it did lead to? Mm -hmm. I think it led to musical episodes of various shows. Because there was a Buffy episode where right. it was all singing. There was a Grey's Anatomy episode where it was all singing. Mm -hmm. And in fact, there's another show coming up. Um, I think Psych, they're doing a musical show. Uh, actually, as we're taping this, uh, it's yeah. going to be on tonight, I believe. Yeah, so, you know, that's another thing that, that this leads to is the episodes within other shows that are musically oriented. Right. But my favorite thing is actually the actual Broadway productions on TV. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wish that they would do that, like, you know, in the movie theaters where they sometimes show the operas. I think it would be cool if they just taped the um, Broadway show so that people who aren't in New York could go see a Broadway show. That would be nice. You can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics, on iTunes or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye-bye.